My name is uh, Amel Yasef. I am the chairperson of the European Network Against Racism and we are presently in Lisbon celebrating our 20th anniversary for our General Assembly. Um, it is a pretty significant uh, time uh, to be here uh, and to be able to see and connect with the um, founding members, with people who were pioneers, who were able to tell us about the inception of the movement and how important that was uh, at the European level but worldwide as well. Um, and also meeting the newer members and young people uh, who are now kind of taking over the movement and you can see the changes and what it's, what it's looking like. Um, there is uh, so much learning from it but I think one of the things that's really standing out for me is how flexible the movement has, well, ENAR has been so far to adapt to what needed to happen and what, what needs to um, be the responses to, to racism, but also really learning from the lessons. Um, for me personally, I, I do represent a member organization and I am a member of that organization who is a member of ENAR for uh, uh, for a lot of reasons, but mainly uh, to claim my agency back. And I think Inar has done an incredible work in, in doing that, in the sense that I am, I keep saying I'm how, how privileged and how proud I am of being part of this organization. And I'm not just saying that it's not, it's not lip service. It, it's, it's, I was sharing with the team um, a couple of days ago how important their work is, uh, because for me personally, and at an individual level, their work and their effort and their commitment has been ensuring that I have dignity and I'm respected and I'm getting spaces to claim my own voice uh, back and um, you know words wasn't was words like empowerment but actually genuinely feeling my power being reawakened in myself because of the incredible work that's happening in here and the work is okay so there's the policy element but it's actually just being with people that can challenge you and people that can um, show you other things that are happening so my power was ignited back I think because I'm one of these people that really believes your power is always there it might be crushed by things and you forget to see that flame but it's always there so it's about kind of reaching down and kind of cleaning up all that kind of rubble and getting your power back and I think one of the many things that help me clean that bubble is to really engage and, and look at all these kind of go deeper uh, and not kind of just uh, look at oh let's let's fight discrimination and look at policy or but actually it is about deconstructing systems of oppression it's deconstructing concepts of racism it's it's deconstructing what we think um, solidarity means as well and actually really self-reflecting on at that level so um, what I so that's a lot of the things that I'm taking from being here and being with peers and with um, people whose, whose journeys have been very different and experience of uh, uh, power disparity though has been very, very similar and that's where we kind of uh, connect. Um, another element that's extremely important for me that I'm seeing happening as well, naturally and organically as well, and I think there's a, there's a leadership that's been taken by Inar, but also the people that are uh, interested in kind of joining us in that space is the whole idea of uh, being intersectional and actually looking at how our movement cannot be an anti-racist movement that is not a feminist anti-racist movement, uh, anti movement, it cannot be an anti-racist an anti movement that doesn't take into account the fights for the rights of the LGBTQI plus uh, uh, communities. It's not a fight that can happen without engaging with uh, disability. It's not a fight that can happen with any sort of um, uh, system that oppresses or, or uh, tries to, to friend, um, marginalize uh, any type of community. We cannot be outside of that fight. We just can't. And I think that's how I actually look at the future. It's actually about us looking at how our difference, um, the difference that we bring in terms of our dignity and our narrative and our claiming our own spaces, but in order to enrich a conversation about deconstructing uh, 
these systems that are in place that are actually the problem. Um, that we are not the problem by raising the problem. Uh, as uh, as uh, we heard it this morning uh, from one of our speakers. So how do we continue the fight uh, by being smart, by being strategic, by actually turning to what is actually the issue, which is, um, and for us in Europe, is a very, very Eurocentric way of looking at things that has been, uh, like systems like patriarchy or other systems that are actually so ingrained in the way we look at things, that it is going to be a long process, a long journey, but we really need to uh, decolonize our minds and decolonize the minds of, of um, our allies and all the mainstream and all the people that we are we're engaging with. So I am very, I, I know it's, we keep talking about how scary times, it's very scary times and it's very shrinking, a lot of shrinking spaces, And but also for the people we are, I'm feeling extremely excited about the possibility of us rethinking a future that it doesn't fit with the the model that is imposed on us so it's been imposed on us it's like what real democracy should look like or what real governments or governance should look like it's actually we can reinvent that and look at another system so um yeah scary times but also very exciting times to actually re reinvent and rethink um all in an effort to become better people and live in well, not even just living well and in respect and dignity.